Today I have with me Lakshmi Praturi, the curator of the Inc. Conference, which will be held in Pune between October 11th and 14th. Lakshmi, can you tell me a little bit about the Inc. Conference? What is it? Inc. is a place that people come together to learn about what's happening around the world. We call it, it's the best brain spa there is. So you learn a little bit of everything that's happening around the world, from art to architecture to technology to business. Uh, who are some of the people who are doing cutting edge work there? and uh, be, become part of a community. So my understanding is this is India's version of the TED conference. So first, can you tell me why you decided to bring TED to India in the first place? I wanted to do something here, and I believe in the intersection of corporate, community, and culture. I think they three should intersect very tightly, and that's really what we wanted to do. The original idea was I was living in California, working there. I came here just to co-host TED India, and I was going to go back. But in the year I spent really with people here, uh, coaching them on their stories, I really realized that we are sitting on a treasure trove in India. We're just not telling these stories properly on a global stage. Um, not because we can't, it's just we don't feel it's necessary. So I really feel it's necessary to tell the India story in its entirety. And how is India Inc. different from TED? Like what are the goals? And how do they differ from the global TED conference? Like what's the India-specific angle? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say we are different from TED. I think we have added layers to it. Um, initially, when we started, it was to just showcase the ideas. And like TED did, we had a fellows program where we would bring all the young people. And we had a separate track for them. They would speak there, and uh, they would learn there, etc. And then we had the main stage where we brought about 40 to 50 great, amazing thinkers, doers, were all extremely accomplished. But what we felt after the first year was that in India, we need to give more support to the youth because they don't have enough forums where they're taken seriously. Uh, and they're amazing thinkers. In fact, I feel I learn every day from someone half my age and twice as smart. And that's the only rule I have in our company about hiring. And, and I felt we need to give them the stage in a much more profound way. So what we did was that we said there will be no separate fellows track. We still have that where they get together, they learn, but all the fellows, majority of them will speak on the main stage. So we have blended in the conference to feature the youth in a much more uh, significant way. So who is the key audience? Is it India's youth? The key audience is, uh, uh, you know, the thought leaders of India. They're people from the corporations, communities, etc. And we do have a youth component. Um, we bring about 20 fellows every year who are very young. Uh, most of them can't afford to come to a conference like this on their own. But they're all doing just amazing things in their own fields. So we bring them for free. Um, and this year, for the first time, we are doing something called Inc. Live, where we are webcasting the conference live to a location about 45 minutes away, where it costs somebody only a thousand rupees to come attend that. And some of our speakers are going to go interact with them. And why is there this, this huge emphasis on youth? I mean, you, you've also spoken about this in previous interviews. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that youth in India right now uh, are to contribute? And do you think that they're different than previous generations? I think the youth today is very different. And the reason, first of all, the reason I am passionate about the youth is that I think everyone does a business that is close to their heart. And to me, when I was young, when I started doing things out of the box, I remember feeling I was wrong. You know, what's wrong with me? Luckily, I had a great home, which was very unusual than any of my friends had. I had a very supportive father, very supportive set of sisters, who allowed me to stray off the path, so to speak, and still feel okay, I'm okay. Um, and if I didn't have that, I really feel I would have lost my passion. I would have lost who I am. And I see that happening a lot. I saw that happening a lot around me, where there were a lot of people with a lot of passions and interests and capabilities who couldn't pursue it because they didn't have that support structure. So there's a personal passion for me to let someone know there's a home here for you, don't worry. Beyond that, from a business point of view, this is, we are at a very um, amazing time in India. 
anyone who's born after 91 is truly free in their mind, which is the most important thing. I mean, I was born way after independence, but somewhere in my mind, I'm not free because I remember we were ruled by the British. I, always, I felt I had to leave here and go to America because the best education was there. So somewhere in the back of my mind, I might feel, no matter what I say, that someone else knows better than me. Whereas anyone born after 91, in, in the 2000s, they were 10, 11, 12, they were teenagers. And they have seen only India rising. They have seen India growing. And uh, they feel that they can do anything they want. They don't have to leave India to pursue what they want. And no matter what their pursuits are, there is some commercial angle to it so they can sustain themselves. If you loved photography, in my time, what do you do? You know, there were like three papers and one television channel and where do you go? But today, if you want to be a photographer, you can pursue many avenues. So I feel we are at an amazing tipping point in India. And I feel we really have only about five to seven years. If we don't support the youth now and give them that freedom to think out of the box, we will create robots and they wouldn't be able to think out of the box but they can and they are so that's why it is exciting for me to do this in India now uh, because I just feel I've gone back to school you know I just feel there's so much for me to learn and the, the young people teach me all the time my eight-year-old teaches me all the time thank you so much for joining us thank you thank you and that wraps up today's show see you next time